The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Let us journey now to Summerfield. Summerfield, the city of homes, nestling like a pearl in the golden setting of the autumn countryside. Trees. Trees are one of the loveliest features of this lovely little town. Shimmering poplars, stately elms, giant maples lining the quiet streets. And as they turn from crimson to gold, the leaves come drifting down. And as the leaves come drifting, in each front yard we find a small boy raking, raking away for dear life. Ah, the simple joys of youth, the rich reward of living close to nature. For as he reaps the golden harvest, raking the leaves into orderly piles, ever and anon comes the playful wind and scatters them. Oh, for corn's sake! How am I going to get anywhere with this? Find where to spend Saturday. If he wants the long rake, why doesn't he come out and do it himself? Well, Leroy, that was quick. Finished already? Are you kidding? Excuse me, Mr. Gilfreeze. Is it all right if I clear away the dishes? Go right ahead, Bertie. You're finished, aren't you, Marjorie? What? Oh, yes. Just leave the coffee, Bertie. I always like a little coffee with my morning paper. Yes, sir. You sure do. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leroy, what seems to be the trouble? Why aren't you out raking leaves? It's the darn wind. The minute I rake them up, they blow away before I can get them in the basket. Well, uh... I need somebody to help me. Help you? That's ridiculous. All right, how would you do it? Where there's a will, there's a way, my boy. Yeah. Huh? Uh. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you finish raking up the yard by this afternoon, I may have a nice surprise for you. What? You're invited to a birthday party. Yeah? Whose? I said you'd be delighted to come, provided you finish up your work first. Yeah, yeah. Whose party? Little Craig Bullard's. What? That little punk. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was very nice of his mother to ask you. She called up a few minutes ago. That and... does it. I give up. I quit. I'm not going to any party with any kindergartners. Kid, I told her, Leroy, that you would come. Gosh, I think I might have something to say about it. I think you might have asked me. I don't have to ask you, my boy, because you're going, and that's all there is to it. Gosh, there goes my Saturday. All right, now you're going out and rake those leaves. Okay, but I need somebody to help me. Why can't Marge help me? She's not doing anything. I'm busy. Yeah, reading a book. Go rake the leaves, Leroy. <laughs> I don't see how she gets to read at the table. You'll never let me. He's right, my dear. You know the rule, no reading at the table. What about you? This is different. I'm reading the newspaper. Merely trying to keep abreast of the times. <laughs> She's still reading, Unc. What's the book, Marjorie? The Art of Ballet Dancing. Tweet, tweet. Leroy, what did I tell you? You go out and rake the leaves. Well, I don't see why I have to be the only one that ever does any work around here. Now, that is a gross misstatement of fact. Well, if anybody ever caught you lifting a finger around here, they'd drop dead. Oh, <laughs> I'll leave it to anybody. I'll leave it to Bertie. How about it, Bertie? What's that, Leroy? Yes, Bertie, how about it? Don't I do twice as much work around here as Unc? Well, Bertie? I pay it. <laughs> She's afraid to say so. She's afraid if she tells the truth, you'll fire her. Leroy. Okay, okay. Leroy, you hadn't ought to talk to your uncle like that. Just leave this to me, Bertie. Leroy didn't mean nothing, Mr. Gilson. Just leave this to me. Young man. I'm going, Uncle. You will rake the entire yard, front and back. Every inch of it. Every leaf, every twig, every pebble. All of it? She. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I'm going. Yes, by George. 
there's one thing I demand of a boy, it's respect. Why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't I take a little... Well, take it easy. Yeah, why shouldn't I? I work hard at the office all week, trying to support everybody. And I come home here... Well, Marjorie? If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go upstairs. Marjorie, this is a matter of discipline. This is... If you ask me, a man's entitled to a little rest. After he's worked hard all week. Besides, a boy ought to learn to help around the house. Acquire the proper work habits. That's important. I had to learn to work when I was a boy. Through with your coffee now, Mr. Gilsley? Yes, Bertie. What's on your mind? I didn't say nothing. No, but you're thinking something. (laughs) Now, what is it? Well, I was just thinking that's an awful big yard for such a little boy to have to rake. Oh, all right, I'll rake the yard myself. Ye gods! Where does it get you? Like bailing water with a sieve. Sure, sure, get a little place raked clean and more of them fall down. The more you rake, the more there are. Oh, darn wind. That's right, go on, blow them all over the lot. What you doing, Gilda? (laughs) What does it look like I'm doing, Hooker? Baking a cake. I never thought I'd live to see the day. The great Gildersleeve actually working. I wish I'd brought my brownie. Judge, if you have nothing better to do than scoff at honest toil, I suggest you proceed on your way. Oh, I haven't come to scoff, Gildy. I've come to admire. All I ask is to be allowed to stand here and watch you. This is something I want to tell my grandchildren about. You optimist. Look, Judge. (laughs) Judge, I have no time to waste on heavy-handed wit. You're going to hang around, grab a basket, and get to work. Don't you wish it. (laughs) Old goat. You're about the tenth person who's come along here and asked me what I was doing, Leela. Ye gods, can't they see what I'm doing? Well, it's not that they can't see it, Throckmorton. They can't believe it. <laughs> you too? <laughs> what you gonna do with the leaves, Bannon? I suppose so. Oh, good. I love the smell of burning leaves, don't you? Makes me cough. Oh, but it's so, so romantic. Somehow burning leaves always remind me of fall. Don't they use Rock Martin remind you of fall? Naturally, that's the only time you can burn them. <laughs> I declare, I don't believe you have an ounce of romance in your nature, Rock Martin. Oh, I don't know. Didn't you used to play in the leaves when you were a child? Didn't you ever get a great big pile of leaves and just fling yourself into it? Once. Well? I went right through it. <laughs> I was a little heavy in those days. (laughs) Oh, you. Uh, Tell me, Throckmorton, did you ever play Babes in the Woods? Babes in the Woods? How do you do that? (laughs) Well, it takes two. I lie down and you cover me up with leaves. And then you pretend you're a big bear and you come crawling around looking for me. (laughs) And uh, what if I find you? find me. You know where you buried me. Well, where's the game? What do I do when I find you? What do bears always do, silly? They give you a bear hug. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so scary and such fun. Look, I'll show you. All right. Hey, Leela, look out. My leaves. I just finished waking those up. Oh, I beg your pardon. I mean, don't mess them up. That's all. I wouldn't think of 
disturbing your leaves for the world, Throckmorton. Well, you don't have to get angry, Leela. Angry? Over a silly little old game like Babes in the Wood? Gracious, I don't know what you're thinking of. Well, that's good. But if you should ever feel like a game of pin the tail on the donkey, let me know. I know just where to pin it. Oh. I'll link you to your precious leaves. <laughs> Well, hello, P.B. Raking leaves, I see. Yeah, you hit it right on the head, P.B. Well, it's a nice day for it. It's not too hot, and on the other hand, it's not too cold. <laughs> no, just about right. That's what I say. When you come right down to it, I believe the fall of the year is just about my favorite season. That's so? Of course, winter is nice if you're prepared for it. So is spring. And then there's summer. Too true. On the other hand, you can run into bad weather. Any time at all. Yes, sir, I've seen some awful winters. Some terrible springs and falls. Uh, tell me, Mr. Gellisley, if you don't mind my inquiring. Yes? How do you come to be doing this, this... Raking. Lose a bet? Ye gods, Peavy. Is there anything so strange about this? I suppose you've never seen a man rake leaves before. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> but I will say this. I, I've never seen you rake them. What is this? Conspiracy? Who sent you over here, Peavy? Why, nobody. I, I was Somebody just... sent you over here to heckle me. Now admit it. Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I was just on my way home. Was it Hooker? Well, I own I did run into the judge on the way. Yeah, I knew it. Why, George, I'd like to know what this country's coming to when a man can't putter around his own front yard without getting a lot of so-called wit and a lot of free advice from every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes down the street. Is that democracy, Peavy? Is that what we've been fighting for? Well, is it? I beg your pardon? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what I think it is. It's communism. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Yes, it is. It's communism. Everybody minding everybody else's business. Mr. Gildersleeve, not so loud. Well, I'm ready for him. Let him come. I got a shotgun right upstairs in my bedroom closet. Let him come. Mr. Gildersleeve, nobody is coming. What's that? I say nobody is coming. Oh, no. <laughs> of course not. How did we get started on communism? I don't know. I said something about the weather. I believe I remarked that it was a nice day. Nice day for raking leaves. Yes, it is. Fine day. Yeah. Well, I guess you'll want to be getting on with it. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Gilder. Hey, goodbye, Peavy. Glad you dropped by. Where's that rake? Oh! Who left that upside down? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, Craig. I'm going to ask you to guess. Where's Leroy? I want him to play with me. Leroy? He's around someplace, I guess. I want him to play with me. Well, come to think of it, I guess he went downtown. No, no. Here he comes now. Hello, Leroy. You want to play with me? Oh, hi, Craig. No, I don't want to play. I'll see you when the party starts. I want to play now. Scram, kid. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, I'm surprised at you. That's no way. If Craig wants to play, we'll confound it. Play. Oh, for corn's sake. Hey, that's quite a pile of leaves you got there, Unc. Just shows what steady work will do, my boy. What are you going to do, burn them? Yeah, you got a match? What would I be doing with matches? I don't know, but I've always suspected you of carrying them. <laughs> well, I'll just have to go in the house and get one, I guess. I see you're not going to offer to. Did you get me a present, Leroy? Yeah, I got one. How much did it cost? Buck? Is that all? That's all my uncle would give me, and if you don't like the present, just give it back, that's all. What is it? None of your business. I'll bring it when I come to the party. Okay. I'm on, my mother ordered four hamburgers for every kid that's coming. Four apiece? That's what she said. I heard her. And three kinds of ice cream. Ice cream or sherbet? Ice cream. Gosh. After, summer, ma after supper, a magician is coming to do tricks. A magician? A real one? Sure, a real one. My father's going to pay him. Hey, neat. Boy, this might be a pretty good party after all. Huh? Uh, it sounds like a swell party. 
You think the magician will need an assistant? You know, somebody like me that knows his stuff. I don't know. I want to play. Sure, Craigie, old boy, let's play. What do you want to play, huh? Oh, wait, here comes Uncle. Boy, now we'll have a bonfire. Hey, boy, stand back. Here, get out of the way. I thought I told you and Craig to play. Well, we are. We were just about to start, weren't we, Craigie? We were just deciding what to play. I know what I want to do. Okay, what is it? Let's run through this pile of leaves. <laughs> I don't think that's a very good idea, Craig. I want to run through the leaves. Come on, Leroy. Gosh, I don't know. Now, you boys find something sensible to do, huh? There are plenty of nice games. I want to run through the leaves. You must not run through the leaves, Craig. I've spent all morning raking these leaves together. Come on, Leroy. Let's run through the leaves. No, I don't think we'd better, Craig. Well, I'm going to. Come on, it's fun. Don't do it, Craig. Here I come. Whee! Oh, boy, you little... Come here. Come here, you little rat. Well, hello, Craig. Hello, Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Bullard. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> I was just escorting little Craigie across the street. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back from across the street in just a moment. Say, ladies, did this ever happen in your kitchen? Gosh, Mom, something smells awful good. Oh, boy, fresh baked bread. Right you are, Johnny. I just took some bread and rolls out of the oven. Can I have some now? Please, Mom. Well, they've got to cool off a bit first. Anyway, you like them best spread with parquet margarine. And Dad used the last bit of parquet on his breakfast toast this morning. Oh, gee, Mom. Oh, cheer up, Johnny. I phoned the grocer, and he says that the craft truck delivered some fresh parquet to his store just an hour ago. Then here I go. I'll be right back, Mom, with some parquet. Oh, boy. Fresh rolls and fresh parquet. And that's the kind of enthusiasm you'll find in millions of American homes for the fresh, delicate flavor of parquet margarine, a fine, fresh flavor that's still unmatched. Parquet is mighty nourishing, too, high in food energy and fortified with important vitamin A. And parquet is easy on your food budget, only about half the price of costly spreads. So tomorrow, buy delicious, economical parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine, made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Leroy has raked the leaves together again, and now his uncle thinks it's time to burn them. Hey, Uncle, can I light up the pile? Can I, I rake them up? You might light it, Leroy. The laborer is worthy of his hire. Give me a match. Here, two matches. That's all a Boy Scout is supposed to need. I'll get by with one. Just watch. Uh -huh. There. She's going, Unc. Seems to be. Uh, why don't you light it on the other side, my boy, too, huh? Get her going faster. Good idea. Boy, she'll be roaring in a minute. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Smells good, doesn't it? Super. Hey, the wind acts like a regular bellows. Look, it's red hot. Hold the pile down with a rake, Leroy. We don't want this thing to get away from us. Okay. Boy, is that hot. Yes, sir. Why, well, I'll bet it... Oop! <clears throat> give me that rake. Darn wind. Hey, you better give me the rake. The pile's starting to blow away. Oh, on your toes, Leroy. Stamp it out over there. Okay, I got it. Oh, my goodness. Look out, Leroy. Get that little patch over there. I'm getting one over here. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it's blowing across the street, Leroy. Catch it. We must let this thing spread. It's funny. Hey, it's an old man Bullard's head. Oh, well, put it out. Gosh, his head is burning. Hey, what the devil's going on here? What do you think's going on, Bullard? We're trying to put out a fire. Yeah, in my head. Huh? Gildersleeve, that barbary cost me 50 cents a plant. If I lose Keep it... Keep your I... shirt on. We're getting it under control. Yeah, it's out now, Uncle. Great. Well, get back on those other places. Okay. What the devil was the idea of trying to burn leaves on a windy day in the first place? It was not windy when I started. You're crazy. It's been windy all day. Not a breath of air. Well, if my hedge had burned, I'd have called the police. I have a half a mind to call them anyway. I dare you. I'll sue you for false arrest. If you'll come down off your porch, I'll... Come on down, brother. <laughs> I wouldn't bother. Get off my property. Why, you... And another thing. 
Tell that nephew of yours he needn't come to Craig's birthday party this evening. Oh, I wouldn't let Leroy come to Craig's birthday party if he wanted to. Um. Why, even if your kid was... The coward? <laughs> well, I guess I told him. <laughs> Now, Leroy, stop moping about Craig's party. It's all your own fault if you miss it. My fault? Told you it was too windy for a fire. You've been more alert. Never gotten into Bullard's hedge. What if it did? You didn't have to offer to punch him in the nose. Gosh, every time I get a chance for some fun, you manage to spoil it. Leroy, I'm sorry. If there's anything I... What are you looking at, Leroy? Just looking out the window. Is it against the rules to look out the window? No, no, of course not. I... There's a truck from the meat market. Oh? They're getting four hamburgers for each kid. (laughs) Some kids wouldn't want that many, so there's sure to be some left over. (laughs) I probably could have had six. Well, well, I'm beginning to see what's bothering you, my boy. You're hungry. All that work and then that excitement putting out the fire. Maybe we can have hamburger over here, too. How'd that be, hmm? Doesn't matter what we eat. But gosh, missing all the fun. Fun? They'll probably cook the hamburgers outdoors. Regular picnic. A picnic? The very thing. We'll have one ourselves right here. Where? Right here in our cozy little parlor. We'll light the fire and you and Marjorie and I will have a picnic. We'll make popcorn, toast marshmallows, and roast apples. Ever eat a roast apple? No. Nope. Best thing you ever tasted. We'll have more fun than the Bullards ever thought of having, Leroy. Bye, George. Leroy, what are you looking at now? There's the ice cream truck. <laughs> Gosh, a whole freezer. Leroy, let's look on the bright side, huh? After all, this morning you didn't even want to go to Craig's party. This morning I didn't know he was going to have all this stuff. Uh, Holy cow, this is going to be the best party in years. Now, now. What am I going to do with this lousy present? You may keep it. I don't want it. Well, then throw it away. Take it back to the store and exchange it. I don't care about the present. I want to go to the party. Leroy, cheer up, huh? We're going to have a lot of fun right here. Yeah. You bet. (laughs) Uh, Marjorie! Marjorie! What is it? Come on downstairs. We're going to have a picnic. Ah, uh, smell those roasting apples, Leroy. Don't they smell good? I guess so. I'll be done in a minute. Time to pop the popcorn. Where is the popcorn, Marjorie? What? I said, where's the popcorn? Oh, there's the box up in the mantel. Gee, we've had that stuff for years. Oh, no matter. It's always good. <laughs> I'd like to see you take a little more interest in our picnic, my dear. We can't have any fun if you're just going to sit there reading a book. We can't have any fun anyway. <laughs> we can't have any if we don't try, my boy. Put your book away, my dear. We're going to make popcorn. Well, we can't all do it. Let Leroy do it. Leroy's going to toast marshmallows. You make the popcorn. Marshmallows. Popcorn. Popcorn. Here, Leroy, here's a toasting fork. Nice long one. Here are the marshmallows. Now, Marjorie, we'll pour some corn into the popper. There. Now, in no time at all, those little kernels will be big, white, crunchy tidbits. You sound just like a radio announcer. Huh? Here. You have to shake the popper over the fire, my dear. Okay. Leroy, you take the... Leroy, what are you looking at now? The kids are starting to arrive. There's Donald Kelsey and Robert Rosenblatt. Leroy, what do you care who goes to their old party? We're having our own party here. There's Peter Fisher. There's Piggy. Stop looking out of that window, Leroy. I forbid you to look out of that window anymore. Oh, gosh, I want to see the magician. The magician? Leroy, what do you think? The roast apples are done. How about a nice roast apple, huh? I'm not very hungry. You'll be hungry when you taste this. Where's the plate? I'll pull one apple out of the fire just for you. Bertie, bring me a plate, quick. Yes, sir, right away. How's the popcorn coming along, my dear? It isn't. Huh? Well, shake it. Never get any place just holding it still. Here's a great Mr. Gillsley. Is that all you wanted? That's fine. Thank you, Bertie. Here, I'll have to brush the ashes off this. There. Now, Leroy, you just sink your teeth into that and tell me if you've ever tasted anything finer. Okay. Careful. Hot. Yeah. Better blow on it. Okay. <laughs> Now. Why, it tastes just like baked apple. It does? And I hate baked apples. <laughs> oh, 
for heaven's sake. Well, we'll forget the baked apples. Let's get back to the marshmallow and the popcorn. How's it coming, Marjorie? It's dead, Uncle Mort. I think it's too old to pop. Nonsense, my dear. Here, let me give it a shake. Hmm. Devil's the matter with it. Come on, you little pop. <laughs> I'm not putting the stuff in these poppers anymore. Pour in another batch, my dear. But, Uncle Morris... Do as I say. I'm going to the door. Oh, good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Who's that? Oh, hello, Mrs. Bullard. I came over to see what's happened to Leroy. Why isn't he at Craig's party? Leroy was canceled by Mr. Bullard. <laughs> my goodness. Now, isn't that ridiculous? I couldn't believe it when Rumson told me. Of course we want Leroy at the party. Why, Craig simply adores him, and so do I. Well, he... Rumson Bullard, don't hang back there like a thief in the night. You come up here and straighten this thing out. I was just coming, my dear. <laughs> oh, uh... Hello, Gildersleeve. Hello. <laughs> well... Well, Rumson? Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you, Gildersleeve. I'm afraid I lost my temper this afternoon. No, no, Bullard. I lost mine. Well, you had reason to lose yours. I, uh, it seems to me I threatened to call the police. Mercy. He was right, Mrs. Bullard. He should have called them. No, no, no. Nonsense. <laughs> Little accident. No damage done. I'm tired of that Barbary hedge anyway. I don't like I mean, it's a beautiful hedge. <laughs> I wouldn't have injured it for the world. Well, anyway, Gildersleeve, I'm sorry. And I do hope Leroy can change his plans and come to Craig's party. Oh, boy, can I? Oh! Just wait till I get Craigie's present. <laughs> well, I guess Leroy can arrange it, all right. Oh, I'm so glad. Here it is. All wrapped up. A box of crayons. I hope he likes it. So long, Uncle. Hey, goodbye, Leroy. Have a good time. Don't worry. Uh, say, wait a sec, will you, Mrs. Bullard? I want to tell my sister something. Say, Marge... You know, I'm going to Bullard's after all. I know. Well, the only thing is, Unc worked pretty hard trying to fix up all this stale stuff over here. So, pretend you think it's fun, will you? All right. Okay. Goodbye, Marge. Goodbye, Unc! And now, a word from our sponsor, the Kraft Foods Company. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Lung. Uh, Lang. Uh, <laughs> it just happens that the sponsor has given me this time this evening, so shove over. Well, go ahead. Get off the property. <laughs> Folks, the war is over, but there are still millions of our men in the service who are a long way from home. They aren't going to get home for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or for a long time after that. If we can't bring all the boys home, let's do what we can to bring a little bit of home to them. We can do that through the National War Fund which provides them with movies and entertainment and such other comforts as can be brought into camp life. Of course, the War Fund also provides for the relief of our allies abroad and for many important community needs at home. I don't know any way that you can make a dollar go farther or do more good. So when they come around to ask you to contribute, be generous, will you? Good night, everybody. The Great Gilder Sleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meeker. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Think of it. Here's a cheese food you can serve in a hundred delightful ways. It's Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food that spreads, melts, slices, toasts to perfection. That means you can use Pabstet to pep up meals from soup right through dessert. And it's really delicious in sandwiches and appetizers, too. Pabstet helps supply the nourishing food values of milk. And it comes in two tempting varieties, golden cheddar Pabstet and pimento Pabstet. Be sure to buy Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food, on your very next shopping trip. This is the National Broadcasting Company.
You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.